So from the beginning of the early music movement until today, there is a lot of debate about this. Or and I just want to touch upon some elements in this video, not saying that I have the truth in my mind or in my fingers. I've just I'm just reflecting on those topics because they are important. Also for the Münchner Sonata, I give you an example for the sixth one, for instance, whether you start like this. Or. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, the Vorschläge, so to say, the Abbagiatura, they are written in small notes. So this G is written in a very small note and then you have the 8 note and 2 16 structure. May note, Abbagiatura is here the G. And whether you play the Abbagiatura long or as a grace note in fact, slightly before the beat, that's an open question. Too many. And frankly said from the beginning of the 19th century until 1960 in fact I think before the early movement started there is no doubt about how to play these ornaments they were all long so long means that this apparatura gets the half of the value of the next note so, playing it as a grace note it would not take any value from the main note played almost the same at the same time and I'm confused as well because for the Turkish Marsh for instance it works great it works often great the Turkish Marsh which is the Yanitscharen elite troops of the Turkish army back then in the 17th 18th century whatever so if you would see a marsh like that it's very slow And it has this cymbal sound, chang ta ta tam, chang ta ta tam, so it really works great. Yet from the early 19th century editions, we see written out in full notation, because that's very well possible in case of a long apparatura, that you write not a, an apparatura, so an ornament, eight note two sixteenths, but you just write four sixteen note. Makes sense, right? So. I've always wondered why in early 19th century they would have done that. Maybe they were not interested in the tradition. And so the early movement clearly took a stand in that. Maybe also a little bit as a kind of differentiation methodology from the piano players. Remember in the 60s and the 70s, it was not at all accepted. It was not common sense that you would play that music of Mozart of Beethoven on another instrument than a Steinway grand piano or a Bösendorfer. So people back then really had to fight for their stage right, so to say, to be in stage, to make recordings, to make play concerts and to be accepted on the same level. And so there was a kind of need also for differentiation. We should not forget that. And so when the Urtext editions came, they presented, like in the Neue Mozart Ausgabe here, clearly, again, the original manuscript or really first print and so many people jumped on that and said well from the beginning of the 19th century the editions were crap because they gave a written out full long apparatura and first it's not their decision to make it's ours which is of course true and you can there's something to say about that but I was, I'm wondering now actually if that's the case if the pianists in the 60s maybe they had a tradition that was right. What I've done, I have prepared and I'm still preparing for a summary of Leopold Mozart and it's just one source. But it's very, very related to the Münchner Sonatas. Uh, I think anyone, everybody could understand that Leopold Mozart, his violin schüler, so his treatise for learning to play the violin, which was a very important book for the violin, as important as for the keyboard CPE Bach was. Also, the, by the same time, 1756, the birth of, of his son Mozart, Wolfgang, 
Um, that the influence of the father, which was an excellent teacher on his son, obviously was great. So in the München Sonata 1775, father and son traveled constantly together. So I think it makes sense to look at this source. I've prepared an extensive summary of Mozart's um, uh, ornaments in a a PDF and a kind of ebook about 40 50 pages not ready yet but when this video is online it will be ready you can download it it is in the description box I wanted to give it for free but it has taken me a lot a lot of work and I think it makes sense to just charge a little bit for that but you will see it's not much and anyway you will have an extensive summary of that book of Mozart regarding the ornaments and it's necessary because if you read the original print it's it's like with CPE Bach it's in, it's people didn't write like we write today it's not ordered in the right way they jump forward they jump back so this is really structured and if you want to have that of um, added to your information you're welcome to download it and you support a little bit our project with that as well for me this is the only way to go through that because it's really complicated having said that if you read if you would only take Leopold Mozart, and that's the only topic for this video, then the solution is very simple. Leopold Mozart clearly writes that it is his first few rules of ornamentation in the Abbaciatura, that if you have an Abbaciatura before a figure like this, 16, uh, 8 to 16, then it's written out like 4 16. So in Mozart's Way of thinking, the Turkish march is played as this. Why are they writing those small ornaments and not writing in full what can be written in full because it's just four sixteen notes? And he's clearly giving advice as that. He said, well, people are used to add their own ornaments, which is a practice we a little bit lost today. So if you not present that he is already playing an ornament, he will add another one. And then you have two ornaments before the main note, which is ridiculous. What I can see now is that in the early 19th century, they might have thought, well, let's change that. Why not write out in full what can be write out in full? So if you can write out four sixteenth notes, let's do that. And the grace note structure, which is difficult to write in full notes, let's write them. In ornaments and I think if you go through Beethoven's work you can see that evolution again that will be covered also in the Beethoven project with the pianoforte there is a lot of work to do so there is a kind of mixture I think and then so the early 19th century editions they make sense if this is correct and if my interpretation of this is correct and please let me know what you think about that in, in the comments I'm really looking forward to, to, to reading that and your um, research and your experience with that would, is very of much interest to me. But if that would be correct, then the early 19th century editions would be more correct than we thought in the 70s and 60s and, and, and 80s when we, when we had these small notes that we treat as grace notes. So I believe that could be something that we might have to change and reconsider again. So for me now in the München Sonatas, I will make all uh, notes long, in fact, all apparaturas long. And sometimes I give you just a few examples to, to close with. In the um, fifth one, the famous one, you have in the Dur Duch Weekend, in the second part, so the middle section, don't know in English. So you have this apparatura on the top. So if you would play it as a grace note, And I don't understand this one. If you make them long, like Leopold Mozart would say, you play them over the quarter note. And in fact, Mozart is um, doing something wrong here. So in this bar, it's written long. So that's interesting. Also the sixth one, I will play it like that. 
I do believe the appoggiatura is long and might have a stronger accent than you would normally with 4 16th notes have. So, hope this was a little bit helpful to you. If this is your first time on the channel, I'd love to have you subscribed. We have regular videos this month on Mozart, Munchen Sonatas, and from this moment on we will have uh, monthly projects on certain topics, composers or pieces. So, um, to stay uh, tuned of everything, there is also a link in the description below, not only to the Mozart uh, summary article, but also to the mailing list. You get a 350 page ebook for free and that's the best place to stay um, updated for all the things we are doing here with Authentic Sound. Anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for sharing this video with your friends and we see each other very soon again. Bye!